It has been quite a week for the tech sector. Intel, my goodness, getting billions of dollars in support from the US government to build new chip plants. Plus, the Apple CEO, Tim Cook, is in China amid declining iPhone sales. And finally, Micron Technology reporting earnings that delighted investors. We saw the stock jumping more than 10%. Let's get the latest from Dan Morgan, Senior Portfolio Manager at Synovus Trust. Dan, it's always great to hear from you. Actually, can we jump? Hi, Andy. Uh, okay, well, let's do Intel. They're getting these billions of dollars, dollars of taxpayer money to build semiconductor plant or chip plants. Um, presumably, if this was a good idea, they would have done it years ago, but the taxpayers have to support it. Well, Andy, I think this is part of an initiative that started a couple years ago, which was concerns that most of the actual production of chips, as you know, is in the Pacific Rim, and that mm -hmm. there's a security risk by not having domestic production, either, let's say, in Canada or the U.S. So Intel was a company who kind of raised their hand and said, hey, we'll go and look at becoming a foundry, competing against companies like Samsung and Taiwan Semiconductor. And this most recent announcement is just an add-on to uh, previous announcements that have occurred in terms of Intel's commitment to building these foundries. These are grants and loans. What they're trying to do, Andy, is they're trying to reduce some of the costs that Intel has on making this conversion. For example, their CapEx in 2020 was about $14 billion. This year, 2023, it'll be about $25 billion. Mm -hmm. And all that extra CapEx cost is mostly associated with this build out of these foundries. So there is a security uh, national defense interest in mm -hmm. having some domestic production. And if you look at a lot of the local chip companies that we know every day, right? NVIDIA, AMD, all these companies, they produce all of their trips in foundries in that Pacific Rim area. And they have committed that if Intel did create this capability, they would be willing to build chips here in the U.S. So it is something that's beyond just handing out a government uh, subsidy to Intel. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess it doesn't look good. Uh, I mean, they're big numbers. And of course, governments, well, our governments here in Canada are pouring billions into uh, batteries and EV subsidies as well. Um, Tim Cook, uh, headed for China, he's in China iPhone, that was one of its biggest markets, um, but there's pressure there. The Chinese have come up with their own pretty good smartphones, and Chinese government doesn't love U.S. technology right now. Yeah, so Tim Cook going to China is not a surprise, Andy, because over the last two quarters, as you've probably reported, Intel, or excuse me, uh, Apple has mm -hmm. come up short in China in terms of expectations, and their growth rate has dropped off substantially. It's a huge part of their business, about 20% of their total revenues. It used to be, Andy, that we used to think of the iPhones in China were kind of like the Mercedes-Benz high-end luxury phones. And what's happening is China, through Yahweh, is producing higher luxury phones that are actually taking market share away a little bit from Apple. And that's what they're trying to respond to in terms of how do we craft this thing to kind of get the growth back into China and, and try to, you know, this is an incredibly important market for Apple. Um, you know, it's over a billion people in population, huge growth. So that is why Tim Cook is there right now, uh, just to, to emphasize that, you know, we want to get things turned around back up in China. I mean, I, I, you, you and I remember Nokia, how dominant they were at one stage. Oh, I know. <laughs> and they we just blew. dated ourselves. Uh, yeah, but they blew it. I mean, could Apple blow it to the same extent? Yeah. You know, it's more than that. And think about Ericsson. Do you remember Ericsson? They yeah. were huge. Uh, Nokia, uh, BlackBerry, uh, all these companies. Uh, yeah, Nor Northern Telecom. Uh, we don't even know that name anymore. Motorola. Uh, so these are names that have kind of vanished. So yeah, there's always change in, you know, in terms of who's got the best product and who's, you know, who's dominating. I mean, we know that Samsung and, and makers uh, like uh, Apple are the dominant players in the space. But, you know, 10, 15 years from now, maybe names that we don't even know about. So obviously, Tim Cook does not want to <laughs> end up on the side of the road, uh, like you mentioned, Nokia did, who we don't even know what happened to that brand. It's been gobbled up so many times.
Finally, Micron, uh, producing numbers uh, that the market likes. Can you remind us what Micron does? What's the focus of its business these days? Well, Andy, it was a good number. We can talk about that. Um, if you look at Micron, they're really driven by two sources. 75% of their revenues come from DRAM, which are memory chips that go into PCs, laptops, servers. They also make what is called NAND, which is flash memory, which goes in USB ports and also mostly goes in smartphones. So mm -hmm. they are a huge producer of memory. This most recent quarter was their second quarter. I believe the street is very excited. They did beat on revenues, they also guided going into the third quarter, I believe 6.6 .6 billion in revenues, plus mm -hmm. or minus 200 million. So that was way above the expectations. And you know what, Andy, the reason why this is such a hot report right now is we had NVIDIA a couple days ago with their GTC conference talking about the new Blackwell chip in the AI space. Everyone is looking to see if AI is starting to positively impact memory, DRAM, and it looks like, at least based on these headline numbers, that that bull thesis looks like it's in place because it looks like a big blowout in regards to the guidance for the third quarter on revenues. I, I guess that chip business is tough, the, the memory chips, because everybody keeps getting more and more efficient and the prices keep dropping. Yeah, so memory chips, DRAM and NAND are commodity-based areas opposed to AI chips, mm -hmm. which are highly, highly, uh, you know, sought after, mm -hmm. very hard to produce. They command huge prices and huge margins. Just to give you a difference, Andy, if we look at, for example, the H100 AI chip that NVIDIA puts out, it's estimated that it goes from anywhere from twenty dollars to $30,000. Wow. That's how much they price it at. If you look at a memory chip, let's say the high bandwidth memory chips that are produced by Micron, they go from about $1,000 to $1,500. So you can get a difference in terms of the average selling prices of the two different areas. DRAM and NAND is the over on the commodity side. AI chips are about as far as away as you can get from that. So that's why they command such different pricing. Would those, um, would those chips though, those Micron ones, those are for use in servers. I guess they're not for use in PCs. Yeah, so PCs, laptop servers use DRAM. Okay. Uh, you know, if you think of, we talk about data centers for cloud, all that is is just huge amounts of, of servers with a network where they're loading the data. And then they also make the NAND chips, like we mentioned, that mostly go into smartphones. So it's a way of kind of gauging what's happening in the server, laptop, PC space, and also what's happening in the smartphone space. And it does look like they are getting a catalyst from AI in that server space. Um, just finally, what's the next big techn uh, technology stock for investors, Dan? Is there something that we're missing? Is there an iceberg <laughs> the market is nearing? You know, you know, Andy, that's a tough question. I mean, it's a lot of the names that you and I talk about a lot on our show and our segments mm -hmm. are really where the action is. I don't know if there's a hidden gem somewhere, no. um, you know, that hasn't already been talked about. Um, we in Sonova's Trust tend to stick with the bigger names. Uh, we're not trying to uncover, you know, the little penny stock that could become Apple again. Mm -hmm. I'm sure your viewers would love to find that, um, <laughs> but we typically orbit in those same names that you and I talk about every time we do these segments. So there really isn't any some secret name that I'm hiding from you guys. No, no, no. <laughs> and um, just finally, MickeySoft, Microsoft, uh, they've obviously reinvented themselves or seen as an AI player. I think even 10 years right. ago, they were seen as stodgy and bureaucratic. Uh, what do you think? Yeah. Uh, that stock up almost 60 percent in, in the past year. Yeah, I mean, Microsoft is a good example of that. You also have some chip stocks other than NVIDIA, like an AMD, like a Broadcom, like a Marvel Technology, that are all now developing AI chips. Qualcomm is developing AI chips. So those are some names that have been around a long time that are kind of reinventing themselves in the form of AI. You mentioned what Microsoft is doing. Uh, they're actually in the works of developing their own chip with AMD, and it's called Athena. That's the code name for it. And as you've mentioned, they have made huge strides now into AI with ChatGPT, along with what they've done with cloud. So a lot of times these companies have been around a very long period of time that we know them as household names, and they kind of reinvent themselves into a new dynamic growth phase that we didn't anticipate. So Microsoft obviously is a good example of that. And Apple is too.